All right, kids, it is a Friday night, and I have the government's protective order that they just filed this evening uh, against one Donald John Trump uh, in the most recent indictment against him uh, for his activities on or about January 6th and between Election Day and Inauguration Day uh, following the 2020 election. So... Jack Smith filed a motion for a protective order in response to at least one, if not more, posts uh, that Donald Trump made to Truth Social. And we will get to that in a moment. What is a protective order? A protective order in federal court in a criminal case, it's typically related to discovery, meaning the production, uh, at this stage, the production of documents, transcripts, um, any kind of information, videos, photographs, anything that the prosecution has in its possession that the defense is going to need in order to mount an effective defense for their client at a jury trial uh, in this case. And spoiler alert, Donald Trump doesn't have any defenses. <laughs> So it's this this document. It's a quick, easy read. It's only four pages long. Um, it references an attached proposed uh, protective order. The order itself. Uh, I couldn't find a copy of this document online that had the actual protective order proposed uh, protective order attached to it. So I don't know specifically about that, but I'll tell you what that means in a moment. The purpose of a protective order. In discovery, the protective order guards against excessive, unreasonable, or confidentiality-breaking uh, requests by parties who are requesting evidence in a case. A and in this, in this case specifically, they're like, you got to put a muzzle on this guy, man. I mean, you got to shut this guy up and keep him off social media or put him in a jail cell. And so the purpose of this order is to allow the government to begin producing discovery, much of which includes sensitive and confidential information. You know, the government respectfully moves the court for entry of the attached proposed protective order governing the disclosure of discovery by the parties in the above captioned case, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then they go into detail about the, the factual background that's relevant to this this motion right here. On August 2nd, so a couple days ago, day before yesterday, the government sent a proposed uh, protective order to counsel for defendant, come over Caligula, uh, Donald Trump. And the defense counsel responded the way Trump's attorneys always do. They're like, whoa, whoa. And... They're like, we need more time, this and that, and da 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 da. And, and Jack Smith and his team was like, look, okay, fine, we'll make a couple amendments to this. Uh, they drafted a new proposed protective order modeled after one entered by federal judge Carl A. Nichols in a recent federal criminal case. And they sent it to Trump's attorneys and said, look, these are the changes that we're willing to make. If you don't go along with this, we don't care. We're going to file it with the court uh, today, August 4th. And so why does the government do this? Because every defendant in every federal criminal case is entitled to basically all of the materials that the government has that it intends to use in prosecuting them. That includes... Uh, grand jury testimony transcripts, which are confidential, uh, and all kinds of other sensitive and confidential material uh, that the government may have in its possession. An important distinction between this case and the Mar-a-Lago documents case. As far as I know right now, uh, there are no documents, there's no video, there's no evidence of any kind relative to Jack Smith's indictment of Donald Trump for uh, events on or about January 6th or between Election Day 2020 and Inauguration Day 2021, 
There, there, none of that evidence is classified or has uh, markings of any classification level. Uh, so that's a huge difference between these two cases. And frankly, that's a big reason why I think that this case, the January 6th indictment, is going to go to trial before June of next year, uh, 2024. And it's going to go to trial well before uh, the trial on the Mar-a-Lago documents case. But whatever. Um so the government has an interest in protecting a large amount of sensitive and confidential material contained within the first set of evidence or discovery that the government is going to provide to Donald Trump uh, and, and his incompetent attorneys, one of whom admitted to one of the counts in the indictment last night while being interviewed by Laura Ingram on Fox News. So that was cool. Um... Now, so the court may, for good cause, enter a protective order governing or restricting discovery or inspection. And citing the case of United States v. Cordova, a trial court can and should, where appropriate, place a defendant and his counsel under enforceable orders against unwarranted disclosure of the materials which they may be entitled to inspect. So, meaning that the government is going to provide Trump's attorneys with, you know, for example, all of these transcripts of grand jury witness testimony. That is confidential for now. Uh, we have not hit the trial stage yet. However, does anybody think that Donald Trump is going to get his hands on those transcripts and not post a bunch of shit on Truth Social as to what's contained in that testimony? That's why the government is seeking this order, one reason. There's another reason. Uh, and I, I highlighted this. And there, I told you, I told you earlier today, when he posted this truth social that said, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. I said, that's a threat to potential jurors. It's a threat to the prosecutors. It's a threat to potential witnesses. It's a threat to the judge. And so they included this section, the government did. Such a restriction is particularly important in this case because Donald Trump has previously issued public statements on social media regarding witnesses, judges, attorneys, and others associated with legal matters pending against him. And in recent days regarding this case, the defendant has issued multiple posts either specifically or by implication, including the following, which defendant just posted hours ago. If you go after me, I'm coming after you. Donald J. Trump, Truth Social. If the defendant were to begin issuing public posts using details, or for example, grand jury transcript scripts, Obtained in discovery here, it could have a harmful, chilling effect on witnesses or adversely affecting the fair administration of justice in this case. And what is very strongly implied is, is what I just said. I mean, when Donald Trump got arraigned yesterday, the judge said two things to him which were remarkably out of the ordinary. Don't do any more criming. Don't commit any more crimes, you criming crimer. <laughs> Because he just he just wakes up every morning and goes out and commits felonies every freaking day. And the second thing she said to him, or the magistrate, I shouldn't say judge, the magistrate said to him, um, do not do anything which could be interpreted as trying or attempting to influence any juror or jurors in this case. If you go after me, I'm coming after you. What a nightmare client. The outcome of a criminal trial is to be decided by impartial jurors who know as little as possible about the case, based on material admitted into evidence before them in a court proceeding, extrajudicial comments, uh, statements made outside of the courtroom, like posting on Truth Social, 
or discussion of evidence which might never be admitted at trial obviously threatens to undermine this basic tenet. So they're basic the the Jack Smith and I mean it didn't even take 36 hours. It took less than 24 hours for Donald Trump to lose his mind on True Social and start posting threats against everybody involved in the case who's not him or his defense attorneys. It took less than 24 hours from his arraignment. Uh, his arraignment at which I am informed and thereupon believe and assert that he sat at defense counsel table and spoke to the judge as though he were a frightened little puppy who had just peed on the rug and was afraid of getting spanked with a newspaper. Um, when he's alone in you know his bathroom with the golden toilet at Mar-a-Lago with his cell phone, he's a tough guy on True Social, but when he's in that courtroom with Jack Smith, who he refused to look at, and with the magistrate or the judge, both of whom are black women in this case, he is a cowed little puppy, man. I mean, he's like, um, uh, yes, yes, your honor. No, your honor. I'm sorry, your honor. Uh, uh, yes, your honor. Because he's a narcissistic bully, and narcissistic bullies are cowards at the end of the day. Um, so what is not mentioned in this document is if there is a specific hearing date on this motion. Uh, or whether there is any kind of a calendar or schedule for Donald Trump and his attorneys to file a response to this document before the judge issues a decision. The judge is going to issue a decision on this, not the magistrate who heard the arraignment yesterday. And so, and I, you know, I mean, they filed this at what, like 6 p.m. on a Friday night or whatever. Um, so it's uh, it's going to be an interesting couple of days. Uh, we will see what the judge does with this. We'll see what Donald Trump's attorneys do with this. And But I fully, fully anticipate the judge to... So she's going to do this in stages. They're like, he's issuing threats. Please issue a protective order. And I think she will issue a protective order which as it relates to discovery documents produced to his team by uh, the prosecution will function as a gag order as it relates to discovery he will violate that then i expect jack smith and his team to file a second motion asking for an actual gag order on him and his counsel and I would expect the court to grant that as well, given that he's going to violate the court's first order. He's going to violate that second order as well for a gag order. And then the third or fourth step down the road is going to be for Jack Smith and his team to say, you know what, man, we give up. He's not going to abide by any of this court's orders as far as not trying to influence or intimidate jurors witnesses he's th he's threatening prosecutors he's threatening judges take his ass into custody until trial and that's when the ball game is going to start because that's where the rubber is going to meet the road and that's where it's going to get real so buckle up it's going to be a bumpy couple of months and have a great friday night and a safe and fun weekend everybody we all want you back here monday morning safe and sound so don't do anything stupid this weekend. All right. Have a great night.